back in the commentary booth here. I'm Croven, and alongside me is Kill2. We have here Cult of War against Pandemic Legion. And Cult of War has brought two Sleptners, one Hugan, and six Caracal Navy issues. And Pandemic Legion, who we've talked about needing to mix up their setup, has done that. Three Golems, one Vulture, one Curse, uh, one Hyena, and three Vigils. Target painting, obviously, the top of the priority list when fielding Golems. Uh, really interesting setups on both sides. This should be a pretty awesome match. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be definitely be a very cool match. I'm very, I'm happy to see Pandemic Legion mix it up. I mean, they were starting to get a little bit of a TWD syndrome, you know, and, and, and with an almost. What's TWD syndrome? TWD syndrome is is the Bob-like syndrome of not changing your setup throughout the tournament and uh. claiming that it's unbeatable. Basically. Oh, TWD was a pilot for them. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, TWD was the guy who, uh, when there was a Bob, he organized their tournament teams for them. So. Uh, but now, uh, now we're, we are seeing a bit of a change from Pandemic Legion, and uh, it, it could prove pretty detrimental to Cult of War if they were counting on seeing those Drakes and Ishtars again. So we have um, the Slipners for the Cult of War team, uh, along with, I assume, the Hugan have come in close range. Uh, Caracal's long range, of course. And it looks like the Pandemic Legion team is running cap transfers between the Golems, so they'll be active tanking. And they're going to be shooting uh, the Hugan first, it looks like. Kind of an interesting target call there. Yeah, well, the Hugan, obviously, the Hugan can also target paint and can web those Vigils and Hyenas down. With the target painting being so key to the Golem's damage, you know, losing those is going to be a big blow. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. They obviously want those uh, those target painting ships in there, and the Hugan is the, the one thing on that team that can easily kill them. Yeah, and then now and we're And our, our peak user uh, is still climbing, you guys. Keep people logging in. It's getting higher still, so awesome work. We just need a few more people's grandmothers to log in, and we'll break 50,000. So uh, now we're seeing, we're seeing shield rep drones on that curse now. Uh, yeah, Golem's uh, running uh, shield rep drones, curse the one taking damage right now, he's shield boosting. Yeah, he is. Gonna say. So no tracking disruptors. He's running a strong shield tank. Maybe another case of uh, baiting the DPS That's to a ship curse. that you choose. Uh, and we did just lose that Hugan for the uh, Cult of War team. Yeah, but we're down to only one frigate remaining for Pandemic Legion, so it could be that it that the Hugan did its job because, I mean, beyond beyond those vigils and that hyena, there's not really much else that, that he was going to do much good against except perhaps perhaps that curse but you know you say no tracking disruptors I don't see any newts coming off that curse no. I don't see any NOS coming off that curse he is he is a bait curse yeah he could have smart bombs Whoa, what just happened what did just he happen? just he just went from 10% shield to a hundred and he did it again yeah they're getting uh, he's that's <laughs> You know, he probably doesn't have any newts because he's using all of his grid for maybe an extra large booster. Does Could he you have get a that? battleship shield booster Could on? Could you there? get that onto with a curse? rigs? You know, if you put on if you put on ancillary current routers, you it's a, you might be able to get it on. And now we're seeing newts. Can't tell who they're coming from or to, but they're 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 lunatics for continuing to shoot that curse. I think honestly. the the newts are running on the slippers. They are doing damage to that curse. Keep in mind, he has no armor or structure HP whatsoever. So. They are getting through the shields, if only briefly, and uh, he will go down if they keep at it, and I assume the golems and vultures would be even harder. <laughs> that is one of the most amazing, in the day, in a day full of hero tanks, and we're just about to lose a Cult of War Slepner, in a day full of hero tanks, oh, this Slepner one down. is definitely near the top of the list. Yeah, this is awesome. This is the coolest, <laughs> the coolest type of tank we've seen so far in this tournament. Uh, and now the DPS is down considerably. That Slipner going down is a huge part of the Cult of War DPS. Yeah, and I'm still... Now there's some smart bombs going off. Uh, looked like some drones just popped from smart bombs. Didn't see who was who was setting them off, but... And Ooh. then again, uh, no, it's one of the golems. Yeah, he's it's a golem. Two and golems. He, and he's killed the, the rep drones, the shield rep drones, and that cost them the curse. Without those shield <laughs> transfer bots, the curse goes down. So now only three golems and one vulture yeah, left for Pandemic that's Legion. That's really bizarre. I mean, obviously it was going to clear off the damage drones, but like you said, those obviously those shield rep drones were doing just a monumental amount of repair. And now that golem is going down Ooh, like yeah. a lead balloon, we may see a mercenary coalition type armor repping uh, raven setup here. No, these are shield are boosting. Are they shield golems. boosting? Yeah, they are. are. They're absolutely. And it's that's just uh, running sensor boosters as well, so not all their mid slots okay. devoted to the tank. They might have been counting on that curse holding up. I think that was a really really important bad decision made right there by Pandemic Legion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> well, now we are seeing some shield rep drones out uh, once again. Ah, it down. <laughs> so there we go, guys. 50,000 users. Crovin, can you scream? 
I can't scream. I'm, I've got a microphone, so for the purpose of <laughs> everything else, we're not going to do guys. it. But that goal, we did lose that second Slutner. Now, that's going to be a huge amount of DPS that gets taken out from the Cult of War team. Obviously, those Slutners doing quite substantial damage. Now, we're seeing this Golem. He's hanging in there. He took a lot of armor damage, but a lot of that was when that Slepner was still out there floating around. Right, right. With the Slepner down, his tank now looks like it's just about enough to sustain against the DPS from these Caracals, and now the Caracals starting to take damage. I just want to go back to the Curse. I think that it's really strange that they decided to Smart Bomb him. You know, you want to do that to clear off hostile drones, but you're looking at a team that really doesn't have a lot of drone DPS, light drones at the most, uh, and not very many of them. So I'm really surprised they decided to do that. It might have cost them. They might have lost it anyway. Well, in the, I didn't see there may have, if there were ECM drones in there, then maybe it changes things up because that prevents you from cap transferring. But at yeah. the same time, I mean, you'd think that these guys had, they may have cap boosters in. And but now we're seeing this this golem has completely He's all the way back all up. All the way back. So if so anybody, you know, had doubted the uh, the viability of marauders in this tournament, just look at how an expert team puts them to use. Pandemic Legion showing that they are absolutely viable uh, in the tournament and yeah. in PvP in general. Well, I mean, you know, and, and, and as much as much flack as I gave them for being uncreative and unoriginal, I mean the fact is they did bring something very interesting to this to this uh, to this match. They brought the bait ship, which we've seen used to great effect multiple times now, and you know, just something that the other team immediately wants to primary, either because it's the weakest looking tank left on the field in the case of something like this, or because it's a huge threat in the case of something like a rook. And this was I mean, I thought I thought the bait rook was good, but this just takes the cake. Yeah, anytime you you have uh, an active bait tank, that's even cooler than the passive one. But um, <laughs> Drone you, know, based. you talk about uh, you talk about Pandemic Legion being uncreative and possibly uh, risking their tournament life because of that they're not uncreative, they're effective. They uh, brought this setup uh, to every match previous to this to, to build expectation and because it was good, but they, you know, they made the change that other teams haven't made in past tournaments where when it's time to ditch the setup you fielded for the whole tournament and go with something new, surprise people, they did it, and it was actually close. I mean, Cult of War, also one of the best teams in this tournament, right. and a very, very close match, but Pandemic Legion is going to pull it off. This Golem is not going to die, and now only four Caracal Navy issues yep. left for Cult of War. Yeah, no, there's no way four Caracal Navy issues break the tank of a Golem, probably without the support from the drones, but with the support of the drones, there's just no contest. Uh, he's going to... <laughs> these these golems are just going to wear them down one by one, and you know it's worth noting as we go down, look at some of the as as we wait for these caracals to uh, to take their damage, and and we see cult of war. They're going to be exiting after this round unless something catastrophic happens, like all the other ships, you know, all the pandemic legions ships simultaneously logging off. Barring that, we're going to see cult of war leave the tournament in this round, and definitely a really really good showing for them, and just you know. <laughs> Congrats to them so far. All right, all right. We are getting word that th this is a committed EVE player. Uh, someone who this is, is e unborn. This is Sirius Sally. Okay, Sirius Sally of EVE News, e News Network. Unborn son signing up for a trial account and watching the tournament this very second. So, so, uh, so uh, that is commitment. Bring your unborn children into yeah, EVE. Evidently uh, uh, not being born, no excuse. They'll be smart when they grow up. <laughs> They'll be uh, vicious economists and PVPers, and that will be uh, exactly good for everybody. It's, it's you know it's well it used to be back in the eighties women would you know put on headphones onto the onto their their bellies when they were pregnant with classical yeah, music. Yeah, listen to explosions. Now it's going to be uh, Eve TV commentary. Pretty sure is what's is what's. You couldn't be listen to anything more sophisticated. No, to be honest. or intelligent, erudite. Yeah. Or American. Um. You know and. Keeping in mind our players, we're taking care of people. I'm watching the Alliance Tournament channel right now. Someone's asked what the fourth ship that uh, Pandemic Legion's brought is, and that's a Vulture. That's they a have vulture. a Vulture and three Golems left. The Vulture playing a really important role in this match, offering um, the shield gang mods, which uh, allow them to tank this damage and get through this match. So He's got he's um, got something coming off here onto the, onto the Golems. That's either going to be a remote sensor booster or a remote ECCM. Um, it, yeah, or a remote tracking link. Or, which yeah, or which would be amazing but useless. That's right. <laughs> so now two uh, Cult of War Caracal Navy issues left. A strong ship we've seen throughout the tournament, but not going to do the job. Golems pulling it through here. It will be just a matter of time uh, until they can bring those last yeah. two down. The uh, uh, second to last one now at about 30% shields. They're then in Pandemic Legion now playing Ring Around the Rosy. Um, looks like their Ravens are all following one another. I would like to see a Pandemic Legion conga line. Um, just going to say, just going to go ahead and put that out there now. I'd like to see a, a Golem conga line. Um, I don't have any more money to offer, 
but um, <laughs> I gave it all to that vigil pilot in the last round. He's rich but now, by the way. He's rich. He's dirty good. rich. He's, he, he could just buy, bought an outpost. He could, he's going to buy multiple vigil BPOs, is what I heard with that, and uh, and perhaps a POS to, to build them with. We just lost another Navy Caracal, just down to a single one left, that one belonging to Romeo Maltheth of Cult of War. He's going to be he's going to be on his way out in just, in just a matter of time, but that that curse is just absolutely blowing my mind. And I mean, I think it would be possible. I mean, I've seen a Maelstrom fit a Capital Shield booster. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly conceivable that a curse with ancillary current routers, reactor controls, I mean, he could fit an extra large shield booster. Yeah, I, I mean, imagine. we see another ship we saw in this exact match, a Slipner, uh, as a totally normal option, runs an extra large right. shield booster on Tranquility anyway. And I don't see any reason that Probably with minimal effort, you could get that fitted on one of the uh, many Tech 2 cruisers, and normally it wouldn't make any sense to, but in this instance, but in this it was case, it was brilliant. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, somebody was asking about that Vulture. For those who maybe just be joining us, we've talked about the Vulture quite a bit, and the, the Vulture is one of those great synergy ships, especially when you've got massive tanks like you're going to see on these Golems. What the Vulture offers you is a bonus to, uh, to the use of uh, shield gang links. And so what he's going to, he's probably giving these golems just massive amounts of shield resists. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, with that, match is over. Congratulations, Pandemic Legion. Still one of the favorites for the tournament. We're going to give it back to Soundwave.